Welcome to Rocky Watches Movies. In this video, we're taking a trip down memory lane to explore the wacky world of weird science from 1985. This cult classic film follows two teenage boys who attempt to create the perfect woman in their bedroom lab. But things don't quite go according to plan, and they end up with a whole lot of weird on their hands. So without further ado, let's dive into 20 things you never knew about weird science. Robert Downey Jr. was aged just 19 at the time. Oscar winner Downey's antics on the film helped him get a reputation as a bad boy long before his addiction issues almost derailed his career. Every inch the young pranksters, Downey and co-star Robert Russler admitted in interviews that they had joked throughout the shoot about defecating in the trailers of the female co-stars and not in the toilet. Reportedly, Downey went ahead and did it. Not in Kelly LeBrock's trailer, but in that of another female co-star. And the stunt nearly got him fired. The computer-generated Lisa is actually named after a computer. The character is named after an early home computer model from Apple, the Apple Lisa. However, the computer we actually see the boys use in the movie is a Memotech MTX512. Memotech soon went out of business due to low sales. With a budget of $7.5 million, one of the costliest moments involved the scene where Gary and Wyatt attempt to make a second girl, but accidentally generate a huge rocket that shoots up through the house. In those pre-CGI days, this effect was created practically on set at no small expense. However, the first take of the scene was ruined when Anthony Michael Hall farted, which cracked up the cast and crew. Actor Robert Russler has remarked that setting up the shot again cost the filmmakers an additional 100 grand. Along with Bill Paxton's Chet, Gary and Wyatt's bullies Max and Ian are pretty much the villains of the story. But unlike Chet, they never face any major repercussions for their actions. This was not the case in John Hughes's original script, which saw Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Russler's characters turned into a pig and a donkey. Rather than getting explicit, weird science plays heavily on the power of suggestion. Notably when the still-clothed Gary and Wyatt share a shower with Lisa. Sorry to spoil your teenage fantasies here, but Kelly LeBrock wasn't actually naked in that famous scene. Wearing bikini bottoms and tape over her nipples throughout. The film's only nudity comes from actress Kim Malin, the piano girl. Weird Science is, in its own way, a comic book movie. The film's title and the distinctive logo used in the credits and on the poster came directly from the 50s comic book of the same name. Weird Science was a publication of EC Comics, the publishing house best remembered for their notorious horror titles, including Tales from the Crypt and The Vault of Horror. The nude pianist who gets swept up the chimney at the end of the film was played by Kim Malin, Playboy centrefold of the October 1982 issue. Malin did her own stunts in the film, which required an elaborate setup. For the shot, Malin was attached to a scaffold, hoisted up into the chimney, where a large vacuum tore her clothes off. A crane then lifted her out of the chimney and dropped her in the backyard swimming pool. It's hard now to envisage any other 80s actress in the role of fantasy female Lisa than Kelly LeBrock, but there were, of course, other notable contenders. Demi Moore, the future Brat Packer, then aged 23, and with just a few small film roles to her name, auditioned for the role. Another candidate was Robin Wright, only 19 at the time, with just a few TV roles on her CV. While neither actress landed the part, this didn't hurt either of their careers in the long run. Moore would get her breakthrough role later in 1985's St Elmo's Fire, whilst Wright would make her unforgettable film debut as Princess Buttercup in the beloved 1986 classic The Princess Bride. Kelly LeBrock initially turned the film down. Already a successful model, Kelly LeBrock shot to fame with her pivotal role in Gene Wilder's 1984 film The Woman in Red. However, LeBrock initially turned down Weird Science because at the time she was in the south of France with Sting. The makers of Weird Science were soon pretty much begging LeBrock to reconsider. They gave the role to somebody else, but three weeks into filming, they had to dismiss her because she wasn't right for the role. LeBrock says, They called me, and within a couple of hours, I was on a plane from France to Chicago. 
Anthony Michael Hall turned down National Lampoon's European vacation to make weird science. Kelly LeBrock may have taken a great deal of persuasion, but Anthony Michael Hall was far more eager. In order to make weird science, Hall said no to National Lampoon's European vacation, the sequel to his breakthrough movie, 1983's National Lampoon's Vacation, in which Hall played the original Rusty Griswold. Because Hall pulled out, this started a new tradition in the vacation movies, with the children of Clark and Ellen Griswold being portrayed by different actors in each film. So who, you may ask, was the other actress who initially landed the role of Lisa, but wound up being replaced by Kelly LeBrock? The answer is Kelly Emberg, who, like LeBrock, was also a model. Emberg achieved a degree of notoriety in the 80s as a girlfriend of rock legend Rod Stewart. When cameras rolled on Weird Science, Emberg had one acting role to her name, 1983 modelling drama Portfolio. However, after three weeks of shooting on Weird Science, it was decided that Emberg's performance of Lisa wasn't up to scratch, and she was sacked in favour of LeBrock. Since then, Emberg has acted only once more in 1997 comedy Dumb Luck in Vegas. Weird Science features an early role from Bill Paxton, who co-stars as Wyatt's bullying, gun-loving big brother Chet. However, Paxton had a bit of difficulty for the scene in which Lisa transforms him into a talking pile of poop. The plan had originally been for Paxton to be inside the suit himself, but the actor struggled with claustrophobia and couldn't do it. As a result, the suit was instead operated by two actors of short stature, and Paxton's dialogue was dubbed in afterwards. Weird Science may well have been a big hit, but it didn't necessarily propel relative newcomer Elam Mitchell Smith to the heights of Hollywood. The young jobbing actor followed the John Hughes movie with a number of small roles in movies and television. Most prominently, Mitchell Smith appeared in 27 episodes of TV series Superboy between 1989 and 1991. However, he soon decided to walk away from acting to instead pursue an academic career. Today, Mitchell Smith holds a PhD in medieval studies and is an associate professor of English at California State University. However, he was coaxed back to the screen in 2017 for a weird science-themed episode of 80s set sitcom The Goldbergs. John Hughes and Anthony Michael Hall fell out during filming and never worked together again. Up to the mid-80s, the names Anthony Michael Hall and John Hughes were more or less inseparable. Hughes had written Hall's breakthrough movie National Lampoon's Vacation, then Hall took major roles in Hughes' first two films as director, Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club. It's no wonder then that the director would give the actor top billing in his third film, Weird Science. Unfortunately, Hughes and Hall's relationship went sour at some point in production, after which they never made another film together. Neither the actor nor the late writer-director ever disclosed exactly what happened between them. Elan Mitchell-Smith got carried away kissing Kelly LeBrock. Aged just 14 at the time of shooting, Elan Mitchell-Smith became the envy of millions, young and old, thanks to the scene in which he gets to kiss Kelly LeBrock. Given the actor's youth and inexperience, we can't really blame him for getting a bit carried away. He wound up sticking his tongue in LeBrock's mouth. Naturally, LeBrock, who was 24 at the time, was taken aback by this, causing her to warn Mitchell Smith, if you ever do that again, I'm going to kick your ass." One suspects that serious questions would be asked about an underage actor performing such a scene with a significantly older woman today, but this is one of those many things shrugged off in the 80s. Anthony Michael Hall was paid twice as much as Elam Mitchell Smith. We had Science was the second movie that the actor Elam Mitchell Smith ever made after 1984's The Wildlife. By contrast, his co-star Anthony Michael Hall was already something of an icon thanks to Vacation, Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club. As a result, Hall commanded a much larger fee for Weird Science. Mitchell Smith has been quoted as saying he made $150,000 for Weird Science, whilst Hall was paid exactly twice that with a fee of $300,000. Mitchell Smith has no sour grapes about this though, pointing out that 150 grand is a lot of money, especially for a 15-year-old. The film went by some very different titles in different movie markets across the globe. In Japan, the film was called Electric Venus, whilst in Germany it was named Cool Magic with Lisa. 
In Denmark, it was released as Touch Me, I'm Yours, whilst in Finland and Sweden, the film was known as Dream Woman. The concept of weird science captured the popular imagination enough for the film to inspire a spin-off TV show. The small-screen sitcom adaption of Weird Science was first aired in 1994. The setup was essentially identical, with teen losers Gary and Wyatt creating their super-powered dream woman Lisa on a home computer. The Weird Science series starred Vanessa Angel as Lisa, Michael Manasseri as Wyatt, John Malloroy Asher as Gary, and Lee Turgeson as Chet. It ran for five seasons and 88 episodes, coming to an end in April 1997. Only three months after Weird Science hit the big screen, actors Anthony Michael Hall and Robert Downey Jr. went from movie stars to TV stars when they joined the cast of Saturday Night Live. Hall and Downey started out on the prestigious comedy series in November 1985, with Hall at 17, the youngest SNL cast member ever, a record which still remains. However, Hall and Downey were fired from SNL after a single season, their work having gone down badly with audiences and critics. Reportedly, writing the screenplay for Weird Science took a mere two days, although it seems likely that this simply was the first draft, with rewrites and revisions made before and during production. It's said that it took him as long to write the screenplays for some of his other movies, including Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club. And that's it for this video. You're now caught up with the interesting facts about weird science from 1985. I hope you enjoyed this video, but if you lasted this long, then I'm sure you did. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss any more upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.